Hey, welcome back to the classroom. Today we're going to be talking about the best ways to meet women. Now, first of all, I want to start off with an absolutely disgusting statistic for you. 65% of men are single. Yeah, it's pretty pathetic. And I know what you're thinking, bro, it's like the hardest time ever to meet women. It's the hardest time ever to pay rent. It's the hardest time ever to like deal with all these new issues that we as a society have that our parents and grandparents didn't necessarily have to agree with. I agree, bro, but like, have a sense of humor, okay? We're all down bad, so don't feel alone, okay? I know you're going to the comment section like, oh, it's cause you know, modern women or blah, blah. Yeah, I get it, bro, we're all suffering, okay? But obviously, we don't want it that way. We want a simple, easy method to go and meet and attract women in real life, make friends, have a sense of status amongst the people that we respect, you know how they always say like, oh, you shouldn't care about what anybody thinks. I disagree. I think that you should not care what anybody you don't care about thinks. But the people in your life that you do care about, you should absolutely care about what they think about you. Because that's what relationships are. That's what friendships are. Some ways of meeting girls are really good, whereas other ways are very bad and cause a lot of problems, especially dating apps, guys. Now, if you're watching this video and you're single by choice, AKA you are happily in a relationship or you don't want to meet girls, then this is not the video for you. Now look, you might be wondering, well, how come women don't just approach men? It's because it's not in their nature to, all right? A man is the one that has to initiate the interaction. A man is the one that has to put the effort in first, okay? It's really that simple. If you wait around for women to approach you, you're gonna die alone because women are never gonna come to you unless you've achieved a level of success and dating success that now women see you with other women or they see that you have status, AKA like you're good at something, maybe it's sports, maybe it's art, whatever it is, then they will come to you. But this is not a sustainable strategy, okay? Think about it this way. If you have a lot of money, you can invest into something and get 5% back, but the more money you put in, the more that you get back in that 5%. But if you invest $1 and you get 5% back, you're not getting enough that it's worth it, all right? So for those of you that are like waiting on the sidelines, waiting for girls to come to you, it's just not gonna work, okay? Now, another thing to take into consideration, I want you to comment your age down below because I keep hearing about how many men are single, but like, I don't know what ages they're talking about, right? When I was like 18, I was single, but then when I was 19, I got in a relationship. Then I was 20, I was single again, and so on and so forth. So I want you to comment your age down below. And when you do that, I want you to scroll down and look at all the other people that are your age too, because I want you to realize you're not alone. There are other people out there as well that have been in the same position as you and are literally in the same position as you right now. And I also want you to write down when you met the last girlfriend you had, where did you guys meet? All right, guys, so in the classroom today, we're going to go over these seven categories. Now, they're kind of in order because this is the order we start with and this is the order that we get to. And that's going to make sense as we get through the video, but let's get started right now, okay? What is the first place that you are going to meet girls? It's going to be school. Unless you're homeschooled, which I think is like less than 1% of the population, you are going to go to school for the first 18 years of your life, okay? I remember being in the classroom till I was like 22 or 23, and then I finally graduated. But I went to like college and university as well. But even if I didn't go to college and university, I was still in school for the first 18 years. And when I was in middle school, that's around the time I started to be attracted to girls. I think I was like 10 years old, nine maybe. And at that point, you know, girls were actually bigger than guys because girls go through puberty before guys do. So I remember there was girls that were like bigger and taller than me. And I was like this little shrimp guy and I didn't know what to do. And then I remember like when I was 13, I came back one summer, went through puberty and all of a sudden I was taller than them. And you know, my voice was a little bit deeper, but this all starts when you're in middle school. And that's when you have like your first crush we used to do like this uh, Valentine's Day thing where you write down your crush and then like you give it to the girl you like. And you know, it's kind of funny in retrospect, but high school is when action actually started. All right. That's when I lost my virginity. I was like 17 years old and uh, that was the coolest thing to do. Now, the thing with school is that you are constantly around people. We're talking eight hours a day. You're waking up at the same time, going on the bus. You're sitting next to people in class, guys and girls. For many people, this is one of the most enjoyable times of your life because you don't have any responsibilities. You don't have to work. You don't have to make money. You don't have to deal with like taxes or any of that bullshit. And you have unlimited energy, which is great too. Plus your parents are most, mostly paying for everything, right? 
So you get food, you get to fucking, you know, hang out with your buddies after school. In Canada, you can't legally work until I think like 16 or 17. So like until you're like 16 years old, you can kind of just do whatever you want in the summertime. After school, you do homework, which is easy. But you know what? It's the best time ever to meet girls and especially college and university because now you're away from home and all of the girls and guys at your school are also away from home, which gives you a sense of independence, right? Now you don't have to worry about your parents being there. Like I remember when I was in high school and I was trying to wheel, I couldn't just expect my parents to leave the house so I could bang a girl. Like what, how am I going to bring that up? Hey, can you guys leave the house that you pay rent at so that I can invite a girl over so she thinks that it's like my house or it, it doesn't work. So because of that, you know, a lot of people, they get stuck in their own head. They don't want to bring someone back to their house because their parents are there. When you go away to college and university, you're not at home anymore. You're living with some friends. Okay. You can bring girls over girls. They have their own house. They can bring dudes over. It's so much freedom. And in addition to this, every day you're hanging out together. Okay. You guys walk to and from class together. You walk around to the cafeteria. All your friends are there. There's extracurriculars, there's sports. It's just like the easiest way to meet people. And I remember being in multiple relationships when I was in college and university. It was awesome. It was convenient. It was easy. And the best part is that like, you're not worried about the future. All right. Take a girl that's 22 years old, compare her to a girl that's 32 years old. All right. That 22 year old, she has no idea what she's doing in the next year. She's in school. She has a lot of friends. She's happy. She's fulfilled. She's graduating her program. She's going to go and backpack Europe or do a little tour of Asia because her parents have money, right? Because if you get sent to university, your parents usually have money. So the world is like her oyster. She can go do whatever. And because of that, she's in such a good mood. It's just the easiest time to get into a, a relationship because like, you know, you don't have any responsibilities. But when a woman is 32 years old, she knows where she works. She knows where she lives. She's been in relationships before. She needs you to fit like a perfect criteria. A 22 year old doesn't. Okay. Just like when I was 22, I had no idea what I was doing. Okay. I was doing an online business. I was working in a chicken factory. I was working as a bartender and I was in school at the same time. And I was like dating casually. Like I had no pressure really, you know, it was a really good time. And that's kind of what gives you that confidence. And it allows you to frequently meet women. So school is where a lot of people meet their long-term partners. And you know, as much as you watching this video right now, obviously you were unable to meet like, you know, your future wife or girlfriend in school. Same with me. Okay. I remember dating girls when I was in college and university, but I'm not dating them anymore. It didn't work out, unfortunately. But I do know a lot of my friends that have amazing relationships. They met in school. I actually have two buddies and they met two girls in high school, high school sweethearts. And one of them just had a kid. The other, they're getting married this summer. They're super happy. They've been dating the same girl since high school. And it's like a beautiful thing. Okay. I know plenty of friends like that, but it doesn't always work out. So like if you're 23, 26, 28, whatever, and you've already been through college and university and you weren't able to get a relationship, it's okay, bro. I was the same way. Okay. Don't worry about it. All right. But with that being said, this is going to be the best. So if you are a young guy, if you're like 19, 20, 23, even if you're going back to school in your thirties, like when I was in Arizona filming videos, I met a bunch of guys that did military service and they got free university tuition because of their service. And they went back to school at like 32. They were banging the shit out of 23 year old girls and they were having a blast. Okay. So you can always go back, but this is going to be the best way because it's just the easiest, most convenient time. And that's where all the attractive women are. Attractive girls go to university because their families usually have money. So that's where they go. Okay. Now, the next best way to meet women is going to be through your social circle. Okay. And this never changes. This social circle starts in high school and then college. And then when you get your first part-time job and you start hanging out with your coworkers, that's your social circle. You are going to be able to meet so many amazing friends through their friends. I remember I had a couple friends that worked at a bar and the friends that they had were super attractive girls because bars employ a bunch of servers, you know, like those cute girls, they walk around and like little black dress, they take your order. Like this guy was friends with all of them. So he would invite me to his house and then there'd be like six or seven baddies there. And all of a sudden I got to be introduced to all these chicks, right? When I started working as a bartender, it was the same thing. Instantly I had a social circle of people that were also servers, bartenders, security guards, you know, and I was around all these new people. We would go out for drinks. 
we'd have birthday parties, we would meet on each other's shifts, even though it wasn't our shift. So for example, even though I didn't have to work, I would go into the bar and I would just do my homework or I'd hang out with my friends that were working. This is the culture. So social circle is absolutely massive, okay? We used to throw these things called kickbacks, darties, whatever you want to call them, where you basically have a bunch of people come into your backyard, you have a couple drinks, you and bring some friends, and it's a rager. There's like 50, 60 people. This is absolutely the best way to meet people, okay? Most of the relationships I've been in that were long-term, I met girls through friends, okay? And that doesn't necessarily mean that like the girl was a friend of friends, but it's like, you know, me and some friends are out hanging out and then we run, run into a girl, you know? Or me and some friends are visiting another group of friends. Or for example, one of my friends, he has a girlfriend and he brings his girlfriend and his girlfriend brings a couple of her single girlfriends and I met them that way, okay? That's how I got into my current relationship. I went to a friend's girlfriend's party and she had a friend that was also there and they were also celebrating the same thing and that's how we met. And that is another one of the reasons why I always tell you guys in my videos, you need to make friends. A lot of dudes that struggle to meet women, they have zero friends, okay? The friends they do have, all they do is play video games or drink beer and watch hockey or whatever versus having friends that actually go out and do stuff. And if your friends don't go out and do stuff, you need to make new friends or you need to take the leadership role in your group and be like, hey guys, let's go out and do stuff because this not only is gonna make you feel better, but it's also gonna allow you to meet more girls. When I hang out with guys that are cool and they have a lot of girls, I'm gonna have way more fun than when I hang out with guys that all they wanna do is play fucking, you know, World of Warcraft or whatever, right? How are you gonna meet girls doing that? You're not. Now, the next way is going to be cold approach. Now, as you can see here, I made this chick thick, okay? Look at that little stick booty. Looking nice and juicy, okay? Some of you guys might even be able to jerk off to that. If you are able to bust a nut to this, leave a comment down below. I'll pin your comment. That's super impressive. I probably, you know, I probably could. I probably could. That's a great looking baddie right there. But anyways, going up and talking to girls in real life is undefeated, all right? They call it cold approach, but all it really is is socializing. That's why my program, Socializer School, is called Socializer School, not fucking PUA masterclass or some bullshit like that. I think pickup is weird. I think that it's cringe, and I think that the industry was probably useful at some point, but it just got completely destroyed by all the, you know, renumerations of it, if that makes sense. And I think the new thing is socializing. You just learn social skills, you spend time with friends, you go and talk to strangers in real life, and when you see a girl you wanna to talk to, you go and say hi to her, you go and have a conversation with her. Then you ask her for her number, or you guys go on a date on the spot. Either way, you set up an activity, ask her out, and then the two of you go out on a date, get to know each other better, boom, now you're dating. This is arguably the absolute best way to meet girls because it's completely organic. In this circumstance, it's very easy to meet girls because you go to hang out with your friends and they usually introduce you to other people. So you meet the girl through your friends, right? But in this case, you can meet a girl regardless of who her friends are because a lot of girls don't have friends in real life. Just like you are introverted and awkward, I'm sure there's a couple girls watching this video right now that never go out. Maybe they have like one or two friends, but those girls have boyfriends, right? Girls don't go out unless their friends go out. So that's why they go to dating apps, which are shit, and we'll get to that later. But for the most part, if a girl's walking around, you know, she's on the way to work, she's in the coffee shop, she's sitting there reading a book, waiting for a guy to approach her, you know, looking around, oh, I'm so pretty today. I wish a guy would come talk to me. Again, that could be you. But here's the thing, maybe your friends are dorks, so you never go out or you never meet any new girls because you know your friends don't. Maybe her friends are you know dorks as well and they never go out. So now you guys can meet regardless of how many friends you have. And that's what's so good about Cold Approach, okay? Maybe you're at an event together. It could be a festival, you know? Maybe your favorite musician is playing. Maybe you're doing yoga in the park or she's doing yoga, you're going for a run. Maybe you guys meet at rock climbing. Maybe you meet at fucking kickboxing class. It doesn't matter, it could be anywhere. That's why it's the best. But in order to have the skill set, the anti-anxiety motion that you can go and talk to her, you need to know what you're doing. And this is where most guys get hung up because it's easy for you. You always had an excuse to start a conversation in school. You always had many shots that were just sitting around you at school. When you have friends that introduce you to girls or they bring you to parties that have girls already, it's easy, it's convenient. This is why guys struggle with this because it's difficult. 
You have to go and start the conversation yourself. You have to get out of your own head. You don't know her. She doesn't know you. You don't know her friends. You don't have an excuse to start a conversation. You have to be able to muster up the courage to do this. And that's why most guys are single, because they can't do that, right? But this is the ultimate way to do it. So if you can do this, you can dominate. You can have multiple dates per week. And this is one of the things I teach in Socializer School. It's my paid community where I have a course that helps you get out of your own head so that you can actually go and start conversations with girls. We also just added a whole new course within Socializer School called the Social Circle Builder, which is like an eight hour course on how to build a friend group, how to expand your current friend group. So like we cover social skills, networking, we cover attraction, we cover how to go and cold approach girls. And I have a bunch of videos of me doing this, okay? And that's how I look, you know? Tall, skinny, fucking stick man guy approaching these big booty Judys. And I have videos of that, breaking it down step by step. So you can join my paid community in the description if you're interested in that. But for those of you that aren't, fair enough, the point still remains. The best way to meet girls is going to be cold approach, all right? And believe it or not, girls are actually very receptive to you coming up and talking to them. Most girls are really cool. You just need to make sure you approach them the right way. Because there are dudes that do it the wrong way, they make girls uncomfortable, they follow them, they're like a little bit autistic and they can't pick up on the signals, she's not interested in you. And because of that, guys get a bad rap approaching girls, okay? So now, she's much more, you know, aware of there being a potential idiot, especially hot girls. Hot girls are so used to dudes going up and talking to them and just being idiots, right? So a lot of the time, they're like kind of abrasive. They're like, oh, what do you want, you know? But the point I'm making is, when you're cool, authentic, organic, when you have a good, strong first impression, when you are a socializer, girls are super receptive to this because more than these, and especially more than these, it shows courage, it shows confidence, it shows boldness. The only way you can show this is during a cold approach. And that's the most valuable asset you can have as a man, confidence. What is more confident than you going up and potentially humiliating yourself to be judged in front of a girl you're attracted to, but still having the balls to do it. That's why that's the best, okay? Now, the next way, and this used to be the most common besides school, is at work. I saw a statistic and it was like, if you're 18 years or older, there's a 65% chance that you have already met your future husband or wife. And that kind of blew my mind, but that was a couple years ago, okay? Now, I don't think it's the same. But after you got out of school, you graduated, you got your degree, most of the time, if you are in a relationship, that person moves back home. For example, there's a university called Western University, all right? It's in London, Ontario. A lot of people fly out all the way from fucking Nova Scotia to attend there, or they come down from Ottawa or Hamilton or Toronto, but then after they graduate, they move away. So you have all these people that are at school together from different parts of the country. So they usually break up April of that year, okay? This has happened to me in my relationships. It's happened to a lot of my friends. They had a long-term relationship, but after they graduated from school, they had different plans, you know? They're gonna go back home, or they wanna travel, they wanna go to a different country, they wanna move into the city. Very rarely are they on the same page. And that's an important lesson too, bro. If you are dating a girl in college or university, and she wants you to move where she's going, you need to make sure that it's what you wanna do too. Because I've seen a lot of guys fuck their life up because they prioritize a relationship over their career, their own goals, their own dreams. And then years later, they broke up and this guy's like, man, I just wasted four years living with this girl when I didn't actually want to do it in the first place. I only did it because she wanted me to, okay? Same thing for girls, all right? Now, with that being said, work is basically like school. You're around a bunch of people. You have a thing you're supposed to be doing. So school work, your job, whatever it is. And you get to interact with girls and guys on a organic basis, right? You guys get to see each other every day, work on assignments together. It quickly becomes your social circle and you go to work functions with your coworkers. You guys go out for happy hour, which is like drinks between six and 9 p.m. That's the culture, especially like <clears throat> in big cities. It's very common for you to go out for drinks after work with your coworkers and then you meet their friends. Next thing you know, you're dating your coworker. I've dated my coworkers before. It's very easy, it's very convenient. That's again, why all this is, you know, I should just put like a big fucking sticker on your forehead that says easy and convenient. School, easy and convenient. Your friends invite you out to places, easy and convenient. Work, easy and convenient. I had a client recently, he fell in love with a girl at his work just because she was the only girl there. And I asked him, I'm like, hey bro, like why her? And he's like, well, like we have like 
we work at the same job, we have two things in common. I'm like, bro, this guy didn't even give a fuck about this girl. Okay, obviously, if you have one girl at your work and you never see girls anywhere else, then you're going to put her on a pedestal and think, oh, well, that'd be easy, right? But it doesn't work like that. So anyways, this is how most people get into relationships. But there's risk associated with that. That's why it's not like one of the better options because if you guys break up, now you're going to see each other at work every day and it's going to be awkward, right? The people at work are going to usually pick sides or be neutral or worse, let's say you're dating a girl at work, you guys break up and then another guy that's your friend at work starts dating her. How awkward is that? You know what I mean? Plus you could get fired because in society, everybody believes women, nobody believes men. So even if she's like, oh yeah, he, uh, he said something rude to me, you're fired, you're done, have fun at your new job, buddy, because men are always bad, okay? Women always good, always believe women, no matter what. Now, the next category is going to be clubs and bars. And technically, you're gonna be doing this all around the same time too, okay? I started drinking when I was in school. I would drink at friends' get-togethers, at their houses, you know, parties, social activities. I usually wouldn't drink before I'd cold approach, but you cold approach oftentimes at bars and clubs. So it's the same thing. And usually you drink with coworkers. Like again, like I worked at a bar, so I would drink with my coworkers as well. But nightclubs and bars are super popular, especially when you're single. Because why would people go to a bar or club to get attention from the opposite sex if they were happily in a relationship? Exactly, okay? So if you ever date a girl and she insists on going out to the club with her friends, that's kind of a red flag. And you could actually say the same thing about guys too. I used to have an entire business that revolved around me going out and interviewing people at nightclubs. And the girls would always get the most views and clicks. So I would prioritize attractive girls. And it totally fucked up my relationship at the time because my girlfriend got so fucking jealous. I was going out interviewing hot girls four nights a week. Like what kind of girl would not be jealous of that, okay? A lot of girls can't handle that. So. The same thing applies when guys don't want their girls to go out and also get a bunch of attention. It's jealousy. It's ugly, but it's a natural thing that men and women both experience, okay? With that being said, though, nightclubs are prioritized for single people because when you have a couple drinks, it lowers your inhibition. So now you're a bit more loose. You're not as concerned about work. And this is where guys finally get the confidence to go and talk to girls, okay? But it's not sustainable because one, you have to drink, which is literally poison. And I don't say that as in like, I've never drank before, guys. I'm actually one of the greatest drinkers of all time. Go watch my old videos. But I never would need to rely on alcohol to do something. But most men do. They need a couple shots before they can go and talk to a girl. So obviously, what are they going to do? Take a couple shots and then walk around during the daytime? No. They're going to go in at nighttime. They're going to put a bunch of fucking axe. Dude, I remember putting cologne every square inch of my body, double rubbing my balls. And I would go out there, I'd be super charismatic and shit, have a couple shots of tequila. All of a sudden, I felt like a million dollars, all right? This isn't an endorsement to drink, but that's where you and your boys go. You have your friends with you, you guys go and approach some girls, you ask them, hey, can I buy you a drink? You know, you don't watch any of my videos, so you don't know what you're doing, idiot, and you just blow it. But you're ending up spending like 200 bucks a night, depending where you are. Like in Toronto right now, it's fucking obnoxious how expensive it is to go out. I make a decent amount of money, but even I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I'm just throwing money out the window, bro. Bottles, over $1,000. Fucking one drink is like 17 bucks for a beer. Are you fucking kidding me? What is this, a baseball game? Fuck you. So the point is, it's just not sustainable. But at the same time, that's where girls go, all right? Because here's the thing. Imagine you're a 22-year-old girl or you're 20 or whatever. You got your school, but maybe you have to commute, so it's online. You work part-time at a veterinarian clinic, okay? Not somewhere cool where you get to meet guys, but like, you know, you're working with disabled kids or some shit and you don't go out, but you're single and you're lonely and you want to meet a guy, but like no guys have the balls to approach you. You don't really have friends and you're not in school and you're not at work. So like, what are you going to do? Well, you go on fucking dating apps. Pathetic. It really is. But guess what? Some girls, they actually realize dating apps are awful. They're toxic. They go on them for a little bit. They get a bunch of attention, which feels good. But then they're like, wait a second. I'm just a piece of meat. This feels like shit. So they delete the dating apps. Maybe they have to bang a couple fuckboys first to learn. But they end up hating dating apps. And then they go back to being receptive to cold approach. Or they like being at bars. But let's say they haven't tried dating apps yet, okay? 
they go out to bars because bars are where guys will be more likely to approach them. A girl could sit in a coffee shop for fucking two weeks and a guy will never come say anything to her. But if she goes to a bar, she's going to have at least five guys talk to her that night, especially if she goes out to the bar or club once or twice per week. Now, normally these introverted, shy, trad batty girls, the thick ones like that, they don't usually go out to bars and clubs because they're not into one night stands. They don't want to meet guys when they're drunk. It's not the best environment. But because no guy will approach them and because it's all their friends do, it kind of forces them to go to bars and clubs. And if you're a girl watching this video right now, comment that down below because I've met so many girls over these years of doing interviews that are like, yeah, like my friends drag me out here because it's, it's their birthday or like, you know, their friend doesn't want to go it alone. So she needs another girl to go with her. A lot of girls, they don't want to be there. Okay. But they go because for whatever reason, it just makes sense. And that is also a way to meet girls. And that's where I've also met some girls through bars and clubs and drinking. All right. And there's a great way to look at this, okay? Back before the internet and dating apps, if a girl was shy and awkward, she would still have to put herself in environments where she could meet men. Therefore, she could be shy and awkward, but if she never left her house, she'd be single forever. So the shy and awkward girls would still go out so that they could be approached, and they'd still go to bars and clubs to meet guys. Sometimes their friends would literally drag them out. Like, come on, like, uh, you know, Susie is fucking single. Let's bring her out. Let's have like some guys come and talk to her, whatever it is, okay? However, nowadays, because of dating apps and the in internet, you can have your cake and eat it too. You could be a shy, awkward, introverted girl that's busy and you don't have to leave your house because you could just download an app and guys will message you, offer to pay for dates and take you out wherever you want. You can get sex easily. It's like not even fair. And that's why I think a lot of guys are so butthurt because they're jealous of the fact that women can get sex instantly, which sucks. It stings. All right. But it's like, don't hate the players, bro. Hate the game. It is what it is. Like who's banging these girls? Other guys, not you, idiot. Anyways, though. So because of that, girls that are shy, awkward, lazy, whatever, they can just stay at home and dating is like automated for them. Dating is like a passive income for women. Imagine if you had a business where you just had sales being made like YouTube, right? So on YouTube, every day I wake up and I check my AdSense and it says, oh, you got 100,000 views yesterday, which translates to like $200, okay? So basically, I'm constantly getting views on my videos, which pays me, which is awesome. It's the same thing with girls on dating apps. They make a profile. Every day they check, oh, I got this many guys swiped right on me. This many guys message me. I message them back. Oh, this many guys want to go on a date with me. It's completely automated and it's easy for them. The problem is... Girls don't like meeting guys on dating apps. Girls don't really like meeting guys at clubs either, but it's like, okay, you had to, right? You got desperate, no guy approached you, coworkers you're not interested in, your friends don't go out much, you've already graduated school, all right, fine, I'll go out. Yes, the guy needed a drink or two before he had the confidence to talk to me, but whatever. Dating apps though, this is the absolute bottom of the barrel, most pathetic spot to be in. And I say this as somebody that used to use dating apps because you basically don't have friends, you don't cold approach or no guys are cold approaching you, which again, that's men's fault in my opinion. I think it's pathetic that most guys are unable to do this. And the same guys that complain girls go on dating apps are the same guys that don't approach girls. If guys approached girls, they wouldn't need dating apps. Do you guys see what I'm saying? It's your fault. It's our fault, not theirs. Stop pointing the finger. But anyways, girls go on here. Now all of a sudden they have all the options. They can meet guys. But the problem is, all the dudes that are absolute degenerate fuckboys like me, we're going to be the ones going on multiple dates per week, leading these girls on. And, you know, I say that like I do it currently. No, but in the past, you know, I was fucking playing the field, bro. Most guys, like, as a guy, if you can make money, you run that shit to the moon. If you can get pussy, you run that shit to the moon. If you are, like, in the flow state when you're playing sports, you run that shit to the moon. It's just how we are. It's go hard or go home. And... When you are a guy and you're doing good on a dating app, you just drop nuts constantly. You're constantly meeting girls, constantly going on dates because you know it's not going to last. And nowadays, dating apps are still, you know, it's still doable. But I remember like 2016, 2017, up until like, I'd even say 2020, it was so easy to go on multiple dates a week on dating apps. All right. Even an average guy, even a guy with a normal profile. But the game is fucked now. Okay. So it doesn't work. But the point I'm making is these guys, they're so in the zone because they're so used to 
you know, socializing, so used to going on dates, they know all the right things to say and they can see multiple girls at once. And then eventually the girls are like, fuck, like this guy doesn't want actual commitment from me. They get discouraged. They realize every guy in dating apps only wants them for sex. So they go through that cycle. Maybe they hook up with a couple of guys. Maybe they find a relationship, whatever. But eventually they go, fuck this. I don't want to meet guys on dating apps anymore. And that is when they go back to this, okay? Or they go and sit in public and wait till a guy meets them. Now, the other thing too is, depending what their job is, you know, eventually new guy starts at the job. Maybe they go back to school. Maybe they hang out with old friends. But these are all of the methods you're going to use to meet women. So really quickly, let me tell you my favorites. Number one, cold approach. Because doesn't matter if you have friends, doesn't matter what your job is, doesn't matter what you know, school you went to, doesn't matter your income, it's all up to how you make them feel in the moment. That is why it's the most powerful. Your first impression, your ability to approach and attract them, show courage, show boldness, make them laugh, set up an activity. These are all things that you can do. You just need the right system to do it. So you can either spend hours watching all my YouTube videos and hoping to figure it out, or you can join my paid socializer school if that is your preferred method, okay? The next thing to do is to have a lot of friends. The more friends you have, the more stuff you get invited to, and the more friends you have, the more likely it is that your friends have girls, girlfriends, or friends that are girls, which you can also meet, or their girlfriends bring their single friends, and again, you guys kind of meet each other mutually, okay? This is also the second best way in Socializer School, my paid community, I actually have a social circle builder program as well that's in there. So you get access to all of my shit, but also like how to build a friend group. School is great too, because it's basically a combination of these in an environment where you have girls everywhere. And what's great about school is it's mostly girls that are attractive. And school, I think, is like 60% women anyways, right? So university, college, great. Work is okay, but it depends your field. Like I was in construction. I had like one girl out of like 400 dudes on the job site, all right? Like, it's not realistic, all right? Especially if you're in like engineering or tech, anything that makes money, there aren't that many women in it, okay? STEM, you know, math, engineering, fucking trades, science. Like, there's some jobs where there's a lot of women. Like, dude, if you're a male nurse, you're gonna fucking clean up, okay? But for the most part, you're not gonna meet them at work, all right? Unless you get a part-time job for fun. That's what I did and slapped. The other thing with cold approach too is like you could travel all around the world, go to different cities. You don't have to be where you are right now. The reason that you are limited is because of your location. You're hanging out with the same people, working the same job. You don't have a skill that's remote, which means you can do it online. And you're not in a city where there's a bunch of people. Maybe you do have the confidence to go and talk to people, but not in your hometown because you're like, oh, well, I've been going here my whole my life and I don't want to run into somebody I know. Perfect. Move somewhere else, bro. The next is going to be bars and clubs. These are still great. My personal preference is not like degenerate nightclubs where you have to be like hammered. Because here's the thing. Nobody wants to spend money at the nightclub. So what they do is they get fucking blackout before they go so that they don't have to spend as much money on drinks when they go there. AKA, you have a bunch of people that are hammered doing degenerate shit, which is super fun, but it's not relationship material. But if you just want to hook up as much as possible, nightclubs are fire for that, okay? But I like like more low key bars, you know, like classy restaurant, happy hour, six to 9 p.m. You know, you see like these professional women, that's a good spot. Dating apps. Look, if you just wanna absolutely lay pipe and you know, become Genghis Khan with all your fucking kids around the world, dating apps are great. But for 90% of men, they aren't great. And even when you do have success on them, it destroys your mental health, takes up all your time. You usually have to spend hundreds of dollars a month. I'm pretty sure there's a new variation of Tinder that's 500 bucks a month. Are you fucking kidding me? You can join my program for 99 bucks a month, all right? Tinder wants 500 from you. Imagine having a free account, knowing that there's some guys that are paying 500 bucks to have an advantage over you on an app. That's the current state of dating apps. That's why they're so fucked. And it's gonna destroy your mental health because you can be a good looking guy, confident, funny, bold. You're crushing it in life. You can go and talk to anybody. Your social skills are off the charts, but they don't know any of that because it's literally fucking binary. It's literally photo, nope, photo, nope. They don't even get to hear you say a word. That's why dating apps are so flawed, all right? Now, at this point in the video, I want you to comment down below, daddy delivers again, just so I know you're watching. But we're also gonna go over the seventh way to meet girls. And I put a little question mark here because, to be honest, I don't know what I would even describe it as. 
You can meet girls in other ways. I know sometimes people have private matchmakers. I know that sometimes there's arranged marriage. Big shout out to all my Indian and Pakistani fans. I know that you guys have already had a couple options. One of the guys in my socializer school community, um, he joined because he's a virgin and he's like, well, I'm going to fucking get arranged marriage soon anyways. I may as well like, you know, learn how to fuck before I have to get married to my future wife. And I'm like, what a world we live in. I was like, how many, how many like options did your parents give you? And he's like, well, four, four girls. They've already let me decide which one I'm going to marry. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing, but it happens. Okay. But there's so many other ways you can meet girls, right? Sometimes you meet girls at fucking Comic Con. Sometimes you meet a girl on a Discord server. I'm not saying that you should do that, okay? There's all these guys that look like shit. They live in like a Discord dungeon and they're like a Reddit moderator and they look like they're f fucked. But there's one girl that also plays Warcraft with them and they like drop everything they're doing, move across the country to meet up with this girl. Like total simp shit, but sometimes people meet like that. Um, another option for you to do is to set your lifestyle up so that you meet women frequently. Why do you think guys become photographers? To take photos? No, because they want to meet hot girls. They want an excuse to hang out with attractive women. And any guy that is like, no, I'm, gonna, I'm a photographer, I do it for the art. Sure you do, buddy. You're fucking lying, all right? Stop the cap, please, okay? There are other options, but these are the best ones. And if I could rank in order which ones girls like the most, then I would say the first is probably going to be this one through friends because that way you can now hang out with her and her other friends, right? So the problem is when you meet somebody for the first time, you don't want to introduce them to your friends right away. You don't want to introduce them to your parents right away. But in this situation, it's super easy. There's so much leverage because you guys meet through friends and then it's like, hey, like, uh, you know, our mutual friend, Sarah, Sarah's having a birthday this weekend. Are you going? Yeah, I'll be there. So now it's not a date. You guys are just going to hang out a second time because you're both friends with the same person. This is the best way because then you guys are now friends for life. You have like this bond. Like if I met a girl through another friend, I'm going to forever be involved with them. So this is like the best way. Okay. Second best way is going to be this because girls have like this idea in their head of how they met somebody. And it's like a little fantasy, you know, like I was at the grocery store and he held the door open for me and he helped me unload my groceries into the car. Or I was at the dog park and my dog ran away and then he went into the woods and he found the dog. Or I read the story recently about this chick that was like, you know, in a house fire and a firefighter came and saved her and she ended up dating the firefighter. You know, girls like that hero story where a guy does something and it's, it's organic, it's natural. I remember on dating apps back in the day, um, one of the running jokes was that we're not going to tell our parents we met here. You know, we'll lie to our parents and said you approached me at the library. Girls want a guy to do this. And if you read a bunch of like evolutionary psychology, girls have some crazy kinks too. Like they're into like pirates, vampires, evil manipulative fucking millionaires that are just going to like, you know, tie them up and do some BDSM shit. Like girls have dark fantasies, but one of those fantasies is just a guy meeting her and it's like accidental. It's authentic. Okay. Next one is going to be school just because it's so easy. Like, yeah, we had the same class. We studied, you know, he asked me out. I said, no, but then I'm like, oh, I'll give him a chance. You know, they all have this little story about like, you know, school. And this is also cool too, because you guys have a shared experience together and usually shared friends too. So that's fire work. This one's okay. But the issue is like, oftentimes you don't want to work at the same place the rest of your life. When you're like 25, you're working at some fucking job and you're like, man, you know, I'm really going to become a partner in six, seven years or I'll become manager or whatever. But it's like, do you really want to do that? No. So oftentimes you don't like your job. Most people don't like their job. And if you don't like your job, then like working with your partner, it, I don't know. It's just weird. It's just, it's not the best. Okay. It's, it's too sticky. It's too sticky. This could be sticky too, by the way. It could be awkward if you break up with a girl and then the friends still hang out together. Next one is going to be bars and clubs. This is cliche, but it's just so common because it's where all the single people go. And the reason people go there is to meet other people. They usually do it with friends and they usually do it in their like 20s, right? Which is the best time for people to start dating. So, well, not for men. Men usually get absolutely run over in our 20s. Okay, boys, I'm in my 20s. I've gotten run over so many times, but I know in my 30s, it's going to be a fucking walk in the park. All right. 
But the point I'm making is like, you know, this ain't so bad, you know, oh, we were getting drinks, we were with friends. Girls will always change the story, right? Like instead of saying, oh, we met on a dating app, be like, yeah, you know, um, we had a mutual friend or like, yeah, like we were both hammered at the fucking club and we did like salsa. It'll be like, yeah, I was in dance class, you know. Uh, oh, I totally forgot about that. Holy shit. Extracurricular activities, dance class, the gym, fucking yoga class, improv class. There's a million different like clubs, activities, events you could sign up for. Technically, I think these qualify for like social circle and uh, cold approach, but like super important for you to join like a dance class, uh, some kind of improv class. There's so many single girls there, okay? Nobody wants to say they met on a dating app because there's no authenticity. It's not organic. The other thing too is like when you guys meet on a dating app, there's this elephant in the room that both of you have to pretend to be the expectation of yourself that you think you are, or more importantly, that you are to the other person, right? So when you have a dating app, you make yourself look super cool. Now you have this idea of not you, but like the fucking super hyped up awesome you. And then you have to kind of live up to that when you go on a date. Because they don't see you for who you really are. They just see the best version of you. So now you have to feel like you're performing when you're on a date. That's not organic or authentic at all, okay? It's totally fake. It's artificial. That's why bonds on dating apps never actually work. And the last one is, you know, it's the random ones. It's the ones that don't really fall, fit into a category. If you have some random way that you met your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever that doesn't fall into any of these categories, leave a comment down below. I'm genuinely curious to hear. Like I've met girls in totally random situations, but for the most part, it usually falls into one of these, you know? So that is how you're gonna meet women. And this applies to you, whatever age you are. If you're like in high school right now, if you're like 16, 17 or 18, don't worry, bro, you got time, okay? Get through school, make friends, start approaching women outside of school, all right? If you're in your 20s, bro, this is a good time to be doing all this stuff. If you're in your 30s, this is a great time because now you have money, now you have your own spot, now you have independence so you can decide to move. You don't have to be in your hometown. You can go to some fucking city, you can go to a new country, you can literally go to fucking Thailand. Like, you can go anywhere you want and do whatever these you want. That's the advantage of being a guy in your 30s. Your money's sorted out, you're working out, your confidence, you have the experience, the maturity. And most women, they like guys that are older too. That's why when you're 20, all the girls that you're interested in are dating dudes in their 30s because they have everything. So you're competing with like every dude ever after the age of 18, which sucks. But again, that's the game, okay? And if you do need help approaching and attracting girls, if you need to build social skills, if you wanna build a friend group, if you want the ability to just make people like you by talking to them, like right now, how long we've we been going? 47 minutes, all right? Not a single pause because I'm good at talking so I can hold people's attention. Imagine if you had this skill that I have right now to hold people's attention for almost an hour. That is what I have available to you in my Socializer School program. You can use that to become a YouTuber. You can use that to become a better speaker, storyteller. You can use it to attract girls, which is what most guys use it for. You could use it to build a new friend group. Hell, you could become a public speaker. It doesn't matter, but that's what's available for you in Socializer School if you want it. But if you can't afford it, we do have a free community as well. 15,000 other men in here talking about self-improvement, talking about all the gains they're making at the gym. Like I have some free resources in here as well for the free community. Basically guys, like I want you to solve your own problems and then I want you to get whatever it is you want. But most importantly, I want you to solve the girl problem. So that way you can realize that life isn't actually about girls. It's about other things, but you can't see that until you solve your girl problem. It's like you're distracted, okay? How many times have you been in a situation where you're like, oh man, I'm just so hungry. Like you want to do work, you want to go and talk to somebody, you want to like do some studying, but you can't focus because you're hungry. That's what it's like to be thirsty, all right? Once you solve your girl problem, all of a sudden you're like, hey, I want to find my purpose. I want to start my own business. I want to travel the world, you know? And that's an amazing feeling, but you don't get that until you solve your girl problem, all right? So with that being said, that's all for today. Let me know your thoughts down below. Best teacher ever. And now that you've made it this far, comments, uh, icicle. How about that?